Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Suppliers. Today we're going to look at the Hoyt Clash compound bow. Um, it's new for 2018 from Hoyt. This is their beginner budget level bow. So now in this review, we're going to compare it to the other mainline budget level bows from Matthews and PSE. We're going to shoot this bow at 18 meters and we're going to put this bow over chronographed and see how well it shoots. Now some quick, quick statistics about this bow. The bow itself is 28 inches from axle to axle, so there, so it's a very short bow, a very, very short bow. Um, the draw length is adjustable from 18 to 29 inches. So 29 inches is a person who's around 5 foot 11 in, in height, right down to a kid size. The draw length, the poundage comes in two sizes, one's from 15 to 50 pounds and one's from 15 to 70 pounds. Now, when you adjust the draw length on this bow, when you decrease the draw length, you also decrease the poundage on this bow. The draw length is adjusted through rotating modules on the back here. This is pretty standard on a lot of bows. You basically, it's a twin cam. So same cam, top and bottom, and you've got a yoke system, top and bottom. The riser is a cast riser, so it's not a machined. It's poured out a bit of steel. Um, You've got plastic limb pockets here. The limbs are parallel, so you're not going to feel a lot of shock when you shoot the bow. And they're not under a lot of tension. You can see there, they're almost flat. So, to me, they've got big cam systems. The weight of this bow is 3.5 pounds of mass weight. Um, it's balanced forward, so it's top heavy when you shoot. So I, ex I expect this bow will be quite nice to shoot. The grip feels comfortable in the hand, but it's got very big cams. And as soon as I saw this bow, this bow came in my shop on Thursday, um, I thought, oh, Matthew's Mission Craze. So I want to compare the other bows from the other companies. Now, before I look at them, I just want to look at some statistics. And the thing that struck me about this bow, when I brought, when I purchased this bow, I'm not a distributor for Hoyt, I'm a dealer for Hoyt. So I buy Hoyt off a distributor in Australia. Now when I brought the, when I purchased this bow because there was a on a forum in America, bow hunting forum, someone was asking about beginner bows and someone said this is an awesome bow. So I thought, well I'll buy it and let's have a look and see how awesome this bow is. Or is it just that people hadn't tried all the other bows? So, um, there's a, one stable one stable hole point there. There's none at the back for the rear stabilizers. Standard sta stabilizers there. No spot for a two-piece quiver. So this is a very basic Hoyt riser. Now the other bows, Mission Craze. Let's look at the statistics first off. The draw length, 19 to 30, so a little bit longer. So it goes to 30, the um, clash goes to 29. The weight on the bow is almost identical. 3.4 for the Mission Craze, 3.4 for the Hoyt. The speed, 300 feet per second for the Clash, 306 for the Mission Craze. Now the thing that strikes me, these bows are both 28 inches, axle to axle. So I'm just going to grab a Craze here. The Craze, craze comes in a whole bunch of different colours. This is obviously the blue. It looks nice, plastic grip. But the Craze is a machined riser, the Hoyt is a cast riser. Machining being stronger. The Craze comes with these little things there, I'm hoping you can see them. This is what the um, limbs bolt into, it's a pocket and as you wind this bow up and down it sits in those little round things, it stops you from stripping out the bow. The Hoyt does not come with that feature. You can see the cams are almost the same size on both bows and both with a rotating module, which is almost identical on both bows. You'll see the back of the Hoyt is flatter, so I expect, and the back on the Mission is a little bit raw rounded, so I expect the Hoyt to be a little bit firmer on the draw stop at the end of the draw. Now, the thing that strikes me, when I purchased this bow, I looked at my supplier and I said, well, how much does he sell this bow for? And, and it was $640. Now, I will tell you what I paid for it, which people will jump up and down about. I don't know how to do that because people get upset if I do that. Anyway, I then looked at what other people in Australia were selling this bow for before I listed it on my website. Other people were listing it for 
for $600 was the cheapest I could find this boat in Australia. The Hoyt Clash was the cheapest I could find in Australia, $600. Now my profit margin on that at $600 was less than 5%. Now postage out to me was about $15. So my profit was less than 1% on a Hoyt. I cannot run a business on 1%. So this is a complete waste of time for any shop in Australia to stock. Um, completely ridiculous. Now, let's just start again. The Hoyt Clash in America sells for $349. The mission craze in america sells for 320 so there's 20 dollars difference between these and you can say 30 dollars the australian dollar is 75 cents so you can buy you know roughly if you have 100 american dollars convert to australian it's about 25 percent about 125 so the mission matthews craze 320 in america it sells in australia for 450 dollars at the moment Sounds about right. You know, there's some costs of freight into Australia. We have a 10% tax. It's in the ballpark of the 25% on top of the 320. This is 349 in Australia. It sells for $600. A complete ripoff. And there's no margin in this bow for me. I actually make money on this bow. Now, often on my videos, I get accused of being PSE biased. This video is going to be no different. This is the baseline PSE bow up against the Mission Craze and the Hoyt Clash. Now, people are going to say, well, you're biased and all the rest of it. Be, be it. This bow is 31 inches axle axle, much easier to shoot than a 28 inch bow. I'm going to say there is nobody in Australia shooting a clash for competition archery. And there's going to be someone. But they're not going to be shooting that well with it. And please drop a line and say I'll shoot really well with that bow. There are a whole bunch of people shooting these bows which retail at $450 in Australia. Shooting amazing scores with this bow. In fact there's one girl in Melbourne going away to the representing Australia. I think as a junior. Um, with this bow, they, they people shoot competitive scores, and when I say competitive, the same as you'll shoot with a two thousand dollar bow with a PSE Stinger, which is five hundred, four hundred and fifty dollars. There is no one doing that with the Hoyt or the Mission. It just doesn't exist. Now, there's no reason why you couldn't, but those huge to shoot the elite scores, people do it with this bow. They don't do it with the other two bows. Now, part of the reason is this bow is easy to shoot because it's 31 inches axle axle. It's got a bigger brace height from there to there. Now, the speed of this bow, 316 feet per second versus the Hoyt, which is 300, and the Mission, which is 306. So you're gaining an extra 10 feet per second on the Matthews and 15 feet per second on the Hoyt. So in America, this bow sells for 300 American dollars. In Australia, it sells for 450. So once again, in this, in the right sort of ballpark, you cannot buy this bow in America cheaper than you can in Australia. Um, the draw length on this bow is from 21 to 30 inches. So it doesn't go down to the 18 or the 19 of the Hoyt or the Mission. The physical weight is a little bit heavier because it's a longer riser. Than the Hoyt, it's at 3.8, but 3.8 is still very, very good. The bow features a string stop, which the Mission and the Hoyt does not. The string stop basically makes the bow a little bit quieter to shoot and a little bit less vibration. Now, do you need this carbon string stop? No, you don't. You do not need it to shoot. In 20, 2018, it's now a carbon rod as opposed to the aluminium in the past. The riser on this bow, on the Stinger, it's a nice, it's still a cast riser. So you can make a case that the Mission is actually better, the riser, than the Stinger. Because it's machined. But to me, this riser looks nice. 
And that's the thing, when you look at a bow, you've got to make a choice. You've got to say, would the mission does have a machine riser, which is better than the PSE riser. But the PSE has more compression on the limbs, so these limbs will shoot better than the mission. So you got to pick up more speed and be a little bit quieter because of the extra compression on these on this bow. Now the poundage on the Hoyt and the Mission bows, the bows are very adjustable in poundage. So much so that you can wind them right down to 15 pounds. Now I would make a case that at 15 pounds those bows are going to shoot very poorly. The PSE Stinger is available in 70 pounds or 55 pounds and they'll wind down at around 35 pounds. So the 50 pound model winds, the 55 pound model winds back to around 20 pounds. So you do have more adjustability on the, on the Hoyt and the Mission Craze than the PSE Stinger. But I'm going to say the PSE Stinger will shoot better because there is more compression on the limbs. And I'm going to say the Craze and the Hoyt wound down to those high, the little poundages are not going to shoot very well because there's not going to be a lot of strength tension on the strings and the cables so I would not suggest it if you want a kids bow buy a kids bow if you want an adult bow buy an adult bow now my last point on this comparison before we go into a full review of the Hoyt the Stinger come the Stinger is a single cam bow so there's no chi no timing of the twin cams and it comes with a draw stop down the bottom here so when you draw this back it's physically going to stop that's not the case with the Hoyt or the Matthews because they are twin cams and you can physically rock them. I think the Hoyt will be a lot more stable with the twin cams and that solid back on the module. But that's what we're going to test with this. But as far as I'm concerned, in Australia the Hoyt is overpriced. In America, I still think the Stinger is better value at 300 without even shooting it because of those factors. $300 to me. I think there's a question there whether the Mission or the Stinger based on whether you prefer the Machine Riser or the Cast Riser and the advantage on the PSE is the longer axle axle and the slightly better limbs on the PSE versus the Mission. So myself if I was in America those are the two bows that I would be comparing. Um, in Australia they retail at about the same price. Um, I'm going to say, in Australia I sell 700 of these a year, I struggle to sell the Mission Craze, I probably, I'm a distributor for PSE and Matthews, um, I do have both bows in stock, the Stinger outsells the Craze 20 to 1, so, and on my last point on that, the originator of the single cam design is Matthews. And on their budget bow they don't even have it, so PSE is paying rights to Matthews for the single cam design. Matthew should have this on the craze and then you could make a case that the craze is a better bow than the stinger but for some reason Matthews don't they pay the royalties to PSE for the twin cam rotating modules and PSE pays the royalties to Matthews for the single cam make sense of that as you will all right so we're going to put some sights on the Hoyt um, clash we're going to shoot it outside we're going to put it over a chronograph at 60 pounds 29 inches and we're going to shoot it indoors at 18 meters and see how well I shoot with it. We're out here to put the we're out here to put the Hoyt Clash through the chronograph. Now the arrows I shoot are the same arrows I shoot every time. These are gold tip velocity 400s with a 90 grain point. They weigh at 325 grains. I have the bow set at 60 pounds at 29 inches, which I do for all tests. Above 300s is, is fast. Below 300 starts to become slower. So the slowest I've got is probably around 260, 270. The fastest bow I've tested has been 315. Now at 300 feet per second, this bow should be probably around the 280 feet per second. So let's see. Now when I've bolted the arrow rest on the sight onto this bow, I'm, I'm gonna say the paint finish on the Hoyts is really, really nice. It's a thick, It's a when I say it's a thick, it feels like a thick paint camo finish I'm going to say it's better than the PSE or the Matthews finish so so the fact this bow in America is $50 more expensive than the PSE or the Stinger you can make an argument that the finish is actually better but I'm not going to say it's a better bow but let's have a draw and let's see how it feels so 
So first off, I'm just going to draw it back. Now I do have this bow set on 60 pounds and it feels light the entire way. I can't even feel the valley come in. So here it's light, light, light. I can't even feel it peaking. I can't even really feel the valley. When I'm back here at full stop, it is very solid. I cannot feel a, I cannot feel a peak, I cannot feel a valley. So I'm sure there is a valley, but I can't feel one. I cannot feel this bow peak. So I can't, it feels, it feels soft. Um, in the draw cycle. So let's take a shot. Two sixty-five. Now I think that's probably fair. I think this is one of the slowest bows I have tested. Um, Two sixty-five. The draw to me is easier than the other bows that I've ever tested. Um, two seventy. It's still at the slowest of all the bows. Now, when you shoot the bow, it's a nice bow to shoot. There's a bit of vibration after the shot. You can feel in the hand grip. Um, the grip itself is nice. It's nice to aim. But there is a bit of vibration in the hand grip and a little bit of a twang when you shoot. You can hear the twang afterwards. Now you don't get that with the PSE stand because it does have the um, stop. The twang you can hear is going to be this string because it's not under a lot of tension because there's not much tension on these strings and cables. Now that was a 263, so we've got a 265, a 263, a 270. And we've got one more arrow. And I am getting contact with the string in my arm. Now I normally don't shoot with an arm guard and I don't have any problems with string contact um, with this bow I did. Now I am shooting at 29 inches. I am 28 and a half. Two six four. Now the the slap I am getting it's down here, so it's where the actual string follows through and hits hits because there's not a lot of tension on the string. The balance actually feels okay, even though it's top heavy. But because when I'm shooting, I'm pushing downwards, so the balance actually feels fine. Bit of vibration, bit of noise. Stinger is much nicer to shoot than this. Um, I'm going to say the craze is nicer to shoot than this. But the bow looks alright and it's a Hoyt. So if you have a Hoyt, you're like, yeah, I'm in the Hoyt fan club. Um, like the graphics are really nice on the limbs. It's a nice looking thing, but I would like a two piece quiver attachment. I would like a lower stabilizer thing, but it's a, you know, it's a price, it's a price built thing. So let's take this inside at 18 meters and see how well I shoot. Okay, so we're ready to shoot the Hoyt um, Clash at 18 meters. Now I have sighted the bow in. I shot four shots um, at 18 meters. My last shot did hit the 10. It was a low 10. Now I'm going to say because this bow doesn't have a high let off at the back end, it is hard to shoot. Um, short axle axle makes it harder to shoot. There's currently a whole thing about short bows with Matthews producing the Triax and PSE just releasing the Evolution 28, 28 inches. I'm not a big fan of short short axle, axle bows. I mean, I love them for hunting, but 28 to me is just too short, too hard to shoot. Now there are videos, oh, there are videos of professional archers shooting 28 inch bows and shooting very well with them. But I'm gonna say no one shoots a 28 inch bow at competition. Um, and those people you see in those videos who go bang, bang, bang at 70 meters and hit the gold, they don't use that bow at competition and they probably shot the, sh um, they probably took multiple shots to take that take. We do this in one take. So now I normally have a camera set up and my camera is out of batteries. So you're just gonna have to believe me where the arrows go. I won't know because I can't really tell where they shoot. Um, I don't suspect I'm going to shoot as well with this bow that I do with other bows that I have shot. 
but I'm going to be interested to see how well it does shoot. Um, now, like I said, this is one of the slowest bows I have ever tested. Now, this is Marla. Um, she's out to it, so um, I'm just going to put her down and we're going to shoot some arrows. She's like, great. I was just perfectly comfortable in your arms. Right, now the arrows I shoot, I shoot the same arrows with all my tests. These are Victories, VAPs. I shoot really well with them. These are my competition arrows. Um, so let's just shoot some shots. Now I, found, I shoot 28 and a half inches. This is a 29 inch bow. And I find this is perfect draw length. So some of the bows, even though they're 29, they feel different. Um, this feels like 28 and a half. Well, I think that went right in the middle. So the bow has still got a fair bit of vibration and twang when I shoot it. Um, I get in trouble when, when I do reviews um, with people if I say the product's not good. And if you're a Hoyt shooter and you're reviewing this product, you've got to say it's good because otherwise you're in trouble. This is not a nice bow to shoot. I think that went dead in the center as well. So now I'm going to say the spot on rogue that I that I sell, which is two hundred dollars. It has the American limbs. It is a machine riser. It does have the good limb fittings for the pockets. It does have a two piece. Um, it does come with a two piece quiver and does have attachments for a two piece quiver. Um, and they are going to fit a. A string stop to it feels better to shoot than this the cams are very much the same it is adjustable like this in the draw length but to me that bow a $200 bow feels better than this one which is a $600 bow and I make more money on the $200 bow by the way jeez oh, Right, so I think I went in the middle, right? <laughs> it just, just sounds awful. So with this bow, the what what Hoyt should be doing, they should be adding a string stop to this. They should have more compression on these limbs. They should have silencers fitted to the string, but it's gonna slow it down. But man, you need to take out this twang. This twang is horrible. It's the worst bow I've shot. I'm not saying that because I hate Hoyt. I think this bow looks good. Um, it's comfortable in the hand, but just in the shot. Oh, terrible. Like it feels okay. The balance is good after the shot. Um, look, this bow is really aimed at the beginner market. And like, why are you spending six hundred and forty dollars or six hundred dollars on a beginner bow when you can buy a beginner bow for two hundred dollars? I think they're going all right, but it's just not a good bow to shoot. It's going to be hard to shoot. It's yeah, not. Not, not impressed. Now when I compare this against the other cheap Chinese bows that I've shot uh, and, and compare those videos, I think they shoot better. We'll just shoot two more shots. The more I shoot this bow, normally the more I shoot a bow, the more I like it. The more I shoot this bow, the more I dislike it. Not a, no, like not good. God, it sounds like it's about to break. Now, Hoyt is rock solid as far as bows. Um, the limbs are good. 
I think even on their website, this bow, you can dry fire, but I wouldn't want to test that. Um, it just, it just sounds like it's about to break every shot. It's just, hence I don't have a Hoyt dealership because if I did a video like this, they would drop me. But my point would be, if I'm testing this and I'm an engineer at Hoyt, don't produce this product. Make it better, make a better product. You don't need to make a cheap product that is crappy. Like, this is crappy. Let's just buy one more shot. Ooh, boy. Now, for $600, you can buy, buy a PSE drive, which is an awesome bit of bow, which is fast, 335 feet per second. It has your hybrid cam system, which is what the $1,000 Hoyt use. It, that is an awesome bow, and I've shot that bow, and I've shot near perfect scores with that bow. This bow, like if you want to buy it, buy it, but it ain't anything like the other bow. So here on that forum said the, Ho the Hoyt, this is a budget bow, you didn't shoot the other bows because there is no one going to pick this bow. And I'm going to go one step further. I'm pretty sure the Australian distributor for this product doesn't even stock it. Because when I ordered, I ordered it two months ago and I only came to my shop today. So, yeah, it's not good. Okay, so I'm up here at the target. Um, that is near the worst group I have shot. Left and right is not too bad. I'm still varying the left and right, but I did a review the other day on a bow. It was the Darton Maverick, and I got up and down movement, but my left and right was almost spot on my left and right is not spot on here I have a group up the top and even down here they are split left and right now that's because of the grip um, could be the way I shoot the bow is shorter which makes it harder to shoot but the variance I'm varying between the nine and the six is quite a big variance so I can't just pull out two arrows and go look I've got a group I really can't even get my hands around even if you go the ones in the gold, I can't get my fingers around. And I've got these ones up the top here. Um, not a good group. Um, now, if you are a Hoyt distributor, do a video with a basic whisker biscuit and a basic five pin sight at 18 meters and see what sort of group you can shoot. I'm sure you can shoot better than I can, but that's just appalling. Absolutely appalling. I might, might take five shots to get it, but that's just dreadful and I'm actually shooting pretty good at the moment so in my own imagination but I am I'm shooting much better than that with a recurve um, I'm shooting better than that and compounds I shoot much better than that so overall my my summary of this the bow has got heaps of adjustment heaps of adjustment and poundage and draw length which is cool but I think it's a complete waste of time because if you're a kid, let's say you're an eight-year-old, this bow is not the bow you should be buying. Let's say you're a 10-year-old, I still wouldn't be suggesting this bow. Maybe for a 10-year-old, you get the 15 to 50 pound version of this and that's okay. Now, if you're in America and watching this, in America, this is a far better bow than in Australia because it's $350 in America. And in America, it's a much better price pointed bow. In Australia, at $600 odd, this is garbage. Um, now, if this bow was $450 in Australia or around the $500 mark in Australia, which is what it should be, this bow, I would say, does have a price point. And even though I make all those things about the shock and the vibration, it is still Hoyt and you are getting a good, when I say a good quality product, a good quality product that's not going to break, 
that is backed by a big big brand manufacturer and they will look after you if you have a problem and I do believe that this bow is bulletproof um, as far as if you do dry fire it I think it'll probably stick together like they say it will it's not overly fast so the 300 feet per second is an over exaggeration by any stretch of the imagination um, it's the slowest bow I've shot but it for a kid beginner bow not too bad um, the finish on this bow I think it is good it's as good as any of the top line Hoyts um, the big brace height the big cutouts here I'm just not I don't know I'm just like it kind of looks cool but like it but it to me it's I just it's, it's kind of a bit of nowhere do you know it's not like it's a high performance bow it's not like it's a kid's bow it's like a bit of a nothing bow it's a bit of an in-betweenish kind of bow and I feel like it's missing its mark because you're not going to shoot this for competition it's a slow bow for hunting it's not really a kid's bow because it's a bit big for a kid's bow it's I mean Hoyt have, Hoyt have marked this at the Bear Cruiser the Mission Craze where PSE have kind of gone off on the stinger and said well we're more an elite product even though we're cheaper um, but I think if you're a Hoyt shop and a Hoyt dealer and I know you're gonna hate this video and you're gonna just crucify me in the comments um, it's probably not a bad bow to have on your lineup so if I and I do stock all the Hoyt bows in my shop um, but this bow I will never ever sell it will never sell even below what I paid for it if I price point this bow two hundred dollars below what I paid for it I don't think I will sell it even then it's, to me it's a very disappointing product and I, when I say that I'm still comparing the price point of what I paid versus what it retails for and like I said my profit margin on this bow is nothing it's um absolutely nothing um but Hoyt do, do produce a quality product. When I say quality, it's tested. The limbs are rock solid. The strings are quite nice. But yeah, if you're going to buy a bow, go into a shop. Um, try it. In my shop, you can come in and try all the bows. We teach you how to shoot. We don't charge you. Um, I do charge $5 for each bow you try because I set them all up for you. But honestly, it's yeah, best to try stuff. You know, come in and try the different bows. And even come in to say, look, I actually, this is a pretty good bow. I had a guy in today who tried all the top line target bows and he purchased a Matthews TRX from me. Um, he came and tried everything. Um, he did agree with everything I said, which was kind of interesting, but he did prefer the TRX, which is always cool. If you go, look, I've tried all these products and I prefer this because I like the finish of this paint. That's cool. Um, but the draw stop is better than the Mission Craze on this bow not as good as the PSE Stinger and the draw holding weight is higher than the Stinger so much harder to shoot so this bow you've got to pull all the way through um, anyway Hoyt Clash that's my review um, there check it out and go into an archery shop and check out this stuff and see what you think and see if I am being biased um, on the product for hating the product or not hating the product um, but at $600 in Australia the dealers the distributors are just ripping off all the shops and all the customers which is kind of I don't know it's a bit sad I don't know maybe that's business and I just don't make enough money Thank you for watching. The more you shoot, the better you'll shoot. Um, and enjoy it when you shoot. It's no use if you shoot like this, which is terrible. It's no use not enjoying it. Just enjoy the shots. Enjoy the process. Um, that's really disappointing for me. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye.